Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and this is part 12 of our Learn Lightroom 5 video series. And in this episode, I'm going to give you some tips on how to get the files off your memory card and into Lightroom. Now, obviously, this probably should have been the first video I did, but everyone was so interested on in learning how to develop photos, I jumped right into the develop module um, with the first uh, several videos. But, um, Needless to say, I'm getting to this now, um, but before I do, if you guys could do me a favor and go down to that box below the video and click subscribe, and if you could comment and like the videos, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, um, this particular, um, on this computer, the external drive I'm currently using, I, I've been using this uh, Lightroom library since 2012. And my uh, Lightroom library is quite a mess, and the reason being is I let Lightroom manage the files the way it's defaulted out of the box. And if you look at my in 2012 here, you see it just puts dates. And if I want to find a specific photo from a specific shoot, um, I it's really difficult to find. Um, you know, I might remember, well, I want to get that um, I photographed my dog on the beach. When was I at the when was that date? And um, if you let Lightroom do it default out of the box, that's the way it's going to do it. And I'm going to show you what how that works right now. And this is what I don't want you to do. Now, if you look over here on the right, I have my time machine. This is, of course, a Mac uh, for backup. And there's this drive here, the Morganti drive, is what I store my photographs on. Um, now, if you put um, the SD card in the computer, um, right away, Lightroom wants to import them. And if you look, see this box popped up right away. And um, it's ready to copy them from uh, the SD card and send them into the library. And you just click import. But what it does, it will um, put just import them with the date in a folder. And um, like I mentioned, you can't, you know, obviously these are windmills, if you could see that. Like maybe two years from now, I go, well, I took some shots of windmills. When was that? And it's just too difficult to figure out and try to remember. Now you could go over here to file handling and you could change this and do it, you know, rename the files, rename the, you know, how it does it. And I found that's just a nightmare too. So what I would suggest is um, you, you don't even bother. Don't do it this way. So I'm going to click cancel down here. I'm going to minimize Lightroom. Well, actually, I'm going to close Lightroom right down. Okay, I'm going to close it right down. Now, typically, what I would suggest you do is put your SD card in with Lightroom totally closed down, so it's not in, not open, and then navigate from your SD card to the files. You could click on the first one, hold your Shift key down, and click on the last one, and you'll select them all. Um, right click and um, copy them. You're going to copy them. Go to, now navigate to your hard drive where you want to put them. Now I uh, I have them under my pictures which is right there and I have 2013 so I am going to sort them by year but that's as far as I'm going to get in date. You see now I have Tiff Nature Preserve, Sturgeon Point Marina, Bird Kingdom, Niagara Falls, Ontario, Butterfly, blah blah blah. And this is I feel a much better way. Now I, I want to go I want to look at for a butterfly picture. I know it's under Butterfly Conservatory. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new folder and we're going to call this windmills. Now if you even could divide this further you could maybe put a date now you know that you know I know I went to min windmills and you know whatever month I went or whatever or you could say these windmills were at Woodlawn Beach and I could even put it further but I'm gonna this is good enough for now so I'm gonna have windmills here and I'm going to paste the six items so it's gonna copy them from my SD card onto the uh, external hard drive I'm using. Now you might not be using an external hard drive, you might have it on your hard drive, whatever. Just copy them, but now I have it named wind Windmills. And I could close all this down, and I'm going to eject, oops, I'm going to eject my uh, SD card before I open Lightroom, because if I open Lightroom with that SD card in there, Lightroom's going to try to import those files. You could turn that off in settings, auto import and all that, but um, even then, it's it's easier just to do it this way. Okay, now I have Lightroom open. I'm going to go to File, Import Photos and Video. 
Now it's going to come up with this box as last time. But what you're going to do is you're going to navigate to um, the spot where you just saved it, which was windmills right here. And there's the, um, looks like six pictures of windmills that I took. All right. Now you notice now what Lightroom did. It's not copying them. I'm just adding them to the library. So it's not going to copy them to a different place in my hard drive. It's leaving them right where they are, but it's just copying them to Lightroom's library so Lightroom knows they're there. That saves on disk space so you're not copying things twice. Um, so you're just adding them. They're, they're staying where they are and you're adding them to the library in Lightroom. And you click import over here and it imported all six and it will go right to them, navigate to them, and it's going to default to the grid, vi grid view. You could change the view down here. You could go to this, go back to the grid bill, or you could just double click on a, on a photo here. Okay, now we have these six photos. Now we're going to start to process them. Remember on previous videos, if you hit the I key, you see the information on the left. All right, or you could just clear it. Now what I could do is I, I'm going to go through a quick edit and I'm going to get out of get rid of any photos I don't like. So what you got to remember are three keys. The X key means that you don't like it. The P key means that's P in Paul as in Paul. P means you're going to keep it. It's a pick. And the U key means you're just not flagging it. You don't know what you're going to do with it yet. So as I go through these, this one uh, uh, I'll call this a pick. So I hit the P key. Now it immediately moves to the next one. This isn't too bad. I'll I hit the P key. All right. Now let's say I don't like this one because it's really crooked. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit the X key on this one. So it rejected that one. And this one, I'll hit the P key. This one, I'll hit the P key. Now this one, I want to rotate it. Now if you hit the command left bracket key, holding command or control if you're on a PC, hit the left bracket key, it rotates it left. If I hit the right bracket key, it would rotate it right. So I'm going to rotate it left. And I'm going to call this one a pick, so I'm going to hit P. So I have, if you look down here, you see these little flags? Those are my picks. And this is a black flag. That means I'm getting rid of that one. Now if you want to really get rid of it, you go up to Photo, Delete Rejected Photos. Now it's going to come up. Do you want to just remove them from Lightroom or do you want them deleted from the disk? Now I want this totally deleted from the disk. So I'm going to delete it from the disk. Now it's coming up with a warning. Because I'm in a, on an external hard drive, it can't put it in the trash bin. It's going to be gone forever when I click this button right here. Okay. It's gone forever. All right. I got rid of that. Now, all right, now we edited our photos by hitting either the X, the P, or if we're not sure, U. All right. Now, another thing you could do is you could um, give them a star rating, like, you know, what you think this, this photo's worth. All you got to do is hit the number keys, one through five. One is one star, five is five stars. Now, you could see at the bottom, I don't know if you could see this down, way down yonder, um, it, one star, five star. I don't use star system at all. Um, a lot of people do. What if you maybe if you use it if you got if you sold some maybe print five star that one was sold. I don't know. You could come out with your own thing of why you would use star system. The other thing to do is you could color code them, and um, six I think it's six through nine are color coded, and um, so it's set set color label. And it's six through nine. Six is red, seven is yellow, eight is green, nine is blue, and purple doesn't have a number. So you could just, if you wanted to color code one purple, you'd have to go to this menu, photo, set color label, purple. So I set that one to purple. So I could just hit six for that one and eight for that one. So I color coded some. Um, I don't know, maybe you'd have a reason where you'd want to color code them. Um, but that's what you would do. Now I'm ready to edit. Um, so I'm going to go over to my purple one, let's say, and I'll go now click up here to the de develop module and I could edit my photo and you've seen, uh, hopefully you've saw the previous videos. 
where I um, edit photos and on landscapes as you know on those I turn highlights all the way down and shadows all the way up to start and I set my white coat first I'm not gonna do this whole photo I'm just just gonna show you the beginnings of of editing okay and I'm gonna set clarity if you're wondering what I'm doing go to video one in the series video three in the series and I believe video nine just a lot of them just try to you know look through they're descriptive I have descriptions on each video and you can see which ones I'm actually working with the develop module so I'm going to turn contrast up um, next thing I'm going to go to the HSL I'm just going to do this real quick so I'm not uh, really explaining everything obviously I'm going to turn uh, yellow up a little green up a little like I typically do and I'm going to bring blue down. Oops, do that again. I do that all the time. Turn that off. Okay, double click on a slider when you accidentally hit it or put it back in the z in the middle. Um, okay, well this is not real good. What I'm rushing to do though is I just wanted to show you. I put a little vignette on there. Okay, you're ready to print it. Or not print it, but you're ready to copy it. So you go to File, Export. I want to export this as a JPEG. Um, so I'm first. You could uh, the the location. I'm going to do it right to my desktop. Okay. Um, I'm going to export it as a JP as a well. First, you name it. I'm going to name this one Windmill. Windmills, and it's going to automatically. If I was if I had all of these selected, you could print them all at once, and it will automatically number them. Uh, windmills dash one. Windmills dash two. Blah blah blah. Um, now, as I mentioned about a zillion times, I'm going to do a JPEG. I'm going to use the sRGB color space. I'm not going to get too much into color spaces, but the sRGB is the most uh, common and versatile. Um, now, you could resize to fit. If you're printing, if you're going to print this into a photo, um, just leave it at 300 pixels per inch uh, full. If you just just don't resize it at all, just leave this unchecked, and it will it will give the highest resolution possible. If you're going to just put this on the web, like on my website, I would click uh, resize to fit. I want the long edge 2500 because that works on my website and I would change pixels, pixels per inch per, to 72. Now that would be good enough for the web. Um, I want to include the metadata um, you know, that came with it. If you want to watermark your image, you could do that here and you just simply click export when you're done. You could just do trial and miss on that thing. You could print, you could make TIFFs, you can make all different types of file types. Okay, now that should be on my desktop, and there it is right there, windmills. If I click on it, and there are those windmills. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to give you a quick overview on how to get your photographs into Lightroom, and I didn't want you guys to make the same mistake I did by letting Lightroom just copy them from the SD card or whatever your memory card is and putting them in a year folder by the date because it's impossible to find them. And I did this for a while. Lightroom 3, Lightroom 4, my previous hard drive is just like that. But as you can see I started wising up in 2013. I have names now and that helps me a lot find the photos when I need to find them. So that's it. Um, that's uh, it on um, all I'm going to do really on the library module. If anyone has any suggestions, you want me to do anything else, um, send me an email at Tony at AnthonyMorganti.com and I'll do it. If you have any questions, email me, ask me questions. I always answer any questions I get. And um, if you could, again, subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it and comment and like the videos. That would be cool. And thanks for watching, and until next time, good shooting.